Um, I mentioned there a story that we haven't seen an awful lot of coverage of in mainstream media. A Court of Appeal decision on a case brought by four members of the New Zealand Defence Force, four of the, I understand, 55 members of the Defence Force, which isn't a huge proportion, four of those people who felt they were unfairly discriminated against for not taking or not taking the full course of the COVID-19 vaccination. Um, it appears from my layperson's reading that the court has said what defence have done wrong is the sanctions for not taking the COVID-19 vaccine are harder and more harsh and more extreme than the sanctions for not taking, say, a measles, mumps and rubella vaccine in the course of your work for the Defence Force. And that, therefore, the policy of the Defence Department was in breach of the Bill of Rights. Now, it's not a ruling, I don't think, on mandates. We can't, but for a legal interpretation of this and what it might mean, I thought we'd better talk to a lawyer, and uh, Stephen Franks is as good as any um, <laughs> former Act MP, uh, Stephen Franks, and friend of the programme. He joins us on the phone now. Stephen, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Um, Good morning, Sean. What does this Court of Appeal ruling judgment mean? I think you summarised it pretty well. Uh, the, the court said that Section 11 of the Bill of Rights Act says that you, there's a right to refuse to undergo medical treatment, but there's another section of that act that says um, your rights can be, can be limited by, uh, by, by actions that are... Um, demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. And the court recognised that for the military, there are reasonable requirements for people to be vaccinated. Uh, they have um, uh, very different conditions from most of us. And that uh, if they are going to be deployed overseas, they, they might need to be ready. So there are a whole prescribed list of vaccinations that people must have uh, if they're in the military and uh, are to be regarded as efficient, the term used to be efficient. I was a territorial army officer, so I, I might use the jargon. But um, in this case, as you said, they seem to have gone out of their way to um, make it much harder for people to who, who, who were unhappy about COVID vaccines or boosters. Does this decision mean that mandates for nurses and other professions were unlawful or not? Or is it specific to defence and the four people who've brought this action? Well, it's certainly not specific to the four people who brought the action. Uh, the court... What, what, what you have there, I, you, you can read... It's an interesting judgment because the court was clearly exasperated by the conduct of defence and the way they ran the case and the information that wasn't provided. And it was pretty clear that the military had got the decision of Justice Cook uh, a year or more ago and decided they were going to do everything they could to frustrate implementing it. Uh, they, they, the normally the decision on whether someone uh, in the military suffers sanctions or limitations because they haven't, aren't fully Did vaccinated. these people actually lose their jobs because they wouldn't take the COVID jab? Um, that was the intent. The, the order actually took that decision away from commanding officers and took it into head office. They mostly have someone called a chief people officer, which I think is ludicrous for a start. Yeah. I mean, every officer was supposed to be a people officer. It's clearly got very woke at headquarters. And uh, so they obviously couldn't trust the commanding officers to decide whether or not uh, a COVID, a lack of a COVID vaccine was problematic, and they took the decision back to um, uh, to headquarters. And I, I don't know whether people had actually been dismissed or not. That the, it doesn't say, but it was quite clear that they were um, trying to to frighten frighten okay. people into. And we're flight. talking about fifty five people, I understand, in total, who were affected by this policy in our defence force. Where is, whose court is the ball in now? What has the court ordered defence to do in response, the Court of Appeal, in response to their ruling? 
I said, don't, you, you, you may not apply the policy, you may not um, be vindictive against the people who brought the action, and you go back, you go away now and uh, make your policy consistent with the instructions uh, of the two courts now that <clears throat> you, you make your actions relevant to the real risk presented by COVID. And the court sets out at some length um, evidence they had for the, for the people who are appealing uh, that suggests that COVID vaccination really isn't very serious, isn't, isn't particularly useful, and that there are possibly risks for young people. And of course, a lot of the military are young. But the the shocking thing to me was to read that pretty much 50% of the people in the military are are not um, fit enough to go overseas. That. <laughs> One of the things the court obviously raised its eyebrows was you're persecuting these people who reject the COVID vaccine, but you've got a whole lot of people who uh, don't come up to criteria and you haven't given us any evidence as to why that's not more serious or as serious. Than not getting the jab. Right. I I see the relevance of that now in the context of the case. I guess, and look, I'll be honest, this appeal court ruling from what I've seen has gone global in what I, I... I fondly call the Cooker community as proof that the vaccines don't work. It is, of course, being uh, leapt upon uh, by Voices for Freedom and that uh, nutty American Steve Kirsch and saying, oh, this, this, is, this is it. This is the definitive body blow breaking news, mother of all revelations. Is it, Stephen, really? That's a pretty consistent application of the effect of the Bill of Rights. The, the courts are obliged to, to to give meaning to an act that says you can't be compelled to take medical treatment, but there are exceptions, and so they've balanced it here. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's fair to say that the court is, is now, there's no longer the hysteria about um, vax-resistant people. I mean, I've, I've had my last vaccine only four months ago. I'm not one, but I certainly think that the way New Zealand abandoned its civil liberties and and tried to turn on the people who are worried about vaccination, um, it was pretty disgraceful. And it turns out that a lot of their their worries may well have foundation. It's too soon to know. So yeah. we should be respectful. Yeah. And 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 the the authorities yeah. in New Zealand were the real problem for me. Speaking as someone who's been in the in the army is that NZDE, you want your military to be respectful of the government and the prevailing ethos, and they were, and they perhaps took it to an extreme. But the the government as a whole was going way over the top against the people who were resisting vaccination. And we had, we had the lockdowns, we had people... Well, I've just had Chris Hitchens on, on the programme live, which is a rare event. Stephen, and he told me, no, there's nothing to apologise for. Oh, I think that's disgraceful. He also told me, and I just want you to refresh my memory, and I suggested to him that lockdowns and restrictions in Auckland, and indeed for a period of several months, the entire South Island, the Cabinet ignored the official advice from people like Bloomfield and kept higher restrictions than were being recommended um, by health officials and their advisers. Is that your recollection as well? Well, you'll recall the Aucklanders were told they were given a shifting target. If you-